It is Tuesday night. DJ it is 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It is another DJ roundtable, and we have a guest DJ. Actually, not just a DJ, but a sound couple, as well as a guest DJ from Australia. And as always, we have some great DJs here. Uh, the one thing I want to start off tonight is some sad news from the DJ roundtable world. And one of the uh, DJs who has been on here many a times has unfortunately uh, passed. Uh, DJ Mike James, you can go to his channel. Uh, link will be down below uh, for his information. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away. Uh, his, uh, his passing will be uh, heavily, heavily on a lot of hearts here today, as well as been hearts on heavy on hearts for a bit, including my own. Um, I've got to know uh, Mike over the what two years, uh, two and a half years he's been on the show. He was originally on here with uh, Instagram, and also on here uh, when we started on YouTube and on Twitch. And it is uh, it is a sad day to uh, lose a uh, gentleman who uh, is actually like about seven months younger than me. Um, all I know is that uh, uh, his wife and his son and his stepdaughter are uh, are safe and, and uh, um, they need our prayers. So uh, I would definitely would say if, uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, uh, you can always reach out to DJ Fire. He has more information. Uh, if you're in the Central Illinois area, uh, he will have a service uh, next week, the day before Thanksgiving, uh, and. Um, it's, uh, it, it, again, it's very, very sad. Uh, Mike, um, he he's a good guy. I had a uh, pleasure of having uh, lunch with him, with uh, Tracy, the four of us, with his son. Um, and uh, one of the funny things with that, uh, as, as Chicagoan, most Chicagoans here eat thin crust pizza. Uh, he ordered deep dish, and I said, you're ordering tourist pizza. He's like, well, I'm going to order some tourist pizza. And him and his son chilled and was eating uh, deep dish pizza and we we're in Tracy. And I were having Tracy was having a salad. I had uh, thin crust pizza, but we were sitting there discussing DJ stuff and DJ business. And it was just a fun time. We probably spent like three hours at uh, the restaurant, just chilling and talking and uh, just having a good time. And that, that to me is, is, you know, having a meal is part of the thing, but also having some time with good people is always great. The, uh, The thing I want everyone to think about when you think about Mike is here's a guy who very knowledgeable in sports, very knowledgeable in music and understanding things, and is someone who I do uh, do feel that he, would, if he would have been up here, uh, he would have been a force to reckon with as a DJ just because of the fact that how he is, how he does does stuff, and how he is as a business person. And he has a very, very, very smart person. He will be short, sorely missed. Um, I can't, uh, I can't say more great things about the guy. Again, I had a lot of pleasure time with him, uh, talking to him many times, chatting with him and just, um, having someone there who, uh, again, who I could share ideas with and bounce ideas off of like I do with a lot of other DJs. Um, so here's one of the things for you guys to think about is tonight when you go to bed, make sure that you um, make sure that you hug your loved ones, give them a kiss, give them a hug, and make sure you tell them good night. Uh, I'm going to take a moment here to be quiet and show a uh, moment of silence for uh, Mike here. And again, thank you all. And again, like we said before, it, it's a sad part. But Mike, like everyone else, <clears throat> would not want people to be sad. He want people to be happy and want people to, to enjoy themselves. So please make sure 
that uh, you do enjoy yourselves. And with that said, uh, thank you, Chris. I saw my internet became unstable for a reason. I don't know why, but the inter interweb gods do what they do every so often, and we all got to ride that big uh, wave. Maybe it was Mike uh, cluing in and saying he wanted to watch what's happening. I don't know. He's in the big internet in the sky. I I'm not going to question anything. Um, so... It's kind of it's kind of hard to go into some fun, but um, <laughs> Matt says his life is unstable. Okay, Matt. Well, yeah, we all know that one. We know his life's unstable. Uh, anyway, trying to lighten the mood. <laughs> we have here the sound couple who has been on before and just great knowledge, uh, and they are in Minnesota, of course, up in the. You can almost say the Great White North. They're closer to Canada than I am. They're closer to Canada than uh, actually Brentley is. Um, but the thing is that they're great people. If you haven't done so already, I, I, all the links to their YouTube channels will be down below for everyone who has a YouTube channel. Go watch the videos. They are usually 40 minutes, 45 minutes, hour long, and they go through a lot of stuff. They are sound engineers. Um and then, you know, they do a little bit of DJing. I use air quotes on that because they don't do a controller. They don't do, you know, they don't, they don't, they're, not using, they're not using all the latest software and stuff like that. They're just providing music for events, filler between bands. They support the bands. They support sound for events. And they primarily do a lot of stuff for those groups. So we're tonight we're going to talk about lighting. And last time, I know I talked, to one half a lot about sound, but I'm going to talk to the boss about lighting. <laughs> the boss and the budget controller. <laughs> Same here. That's why we say Tracy should be on here because Tracy will hear half the stuff. I'm like, you're not spending any money. <laughs> but it, it, it's one of the things that, um, you know, when we do lighting and again, how we do lighting as DJs versus how lighting is done for a band is different, but there's a lot of similarities between the two. And like our goal is to light the dance floor, to code a mood onto the room, uh, to use like, you know, Matt does lasers across the ceiling to give a feel of things, using moving heads, using whatever lighting system we're using. doesn't matter if it's, it's a, a basic gig bar or it's a full-on DMX controlled lighting system using a software to run everything. And you're actually, you know, running, you know, um, a separate laptop just to run that DMX. It's, it's one of the things that I know that, like, DJ Fire does a lot of DMX. I've done DMX. Um, I use a couple of different DMX universes. I know Matt does that. Uh, I know Jeff does a little bit of it. Chris has done a lot of it. Brentley does a lot of it. Uh, with DMX uses certain software. I know the sound couple uses uh, DMX and they use certain things they control. So my first, I know uh, Dwayne also does stuff too. Dwayne, how you doing? Uh, glad you're here Good. as always. Uh, so we all have a little touch of DMX. Doesn't matter if it's going up with a remote control and pressing a button and making it do colors or doing stuff or running some cables or running wireless. It's all very, very similar. The big thing is that how we look at lighting. And this is the thing that I'm going to say how I kind of look at it. I don't like to have, and I've gotten rid of the kind of the spin and puke lights, the lights that are direct, old, that, that flash. Moving heads, I don't have a problem with. I want them to go above people's heads so not blinding people, hitting people in the face. Uh, BSR, Brian S. Rad did a video uh, last week. Um, talking about these new PARs he got from, I want to say, Color Key. And they're kind of cool. They have a wireless remote control. They're, 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 they're radio frequency versus uh, um, using infrared technology, so you can you know, you need a direct line of sight to get them to do things. Um, not as cool as, like, the Ape Lab lights or, like, the Asteras I use, which are, are a totally different animal and much more expensive. But... A step up from, like, say, the uh, Rockville PARs I use, uh, the Rock Wedges. The uh, thing, one of the things he was showing on there is a demonstration of he had four lights on a shelf pointed to the camera, and the lights were just fading color. 
and they're kind of blinding the camera. You kind of just see those bright, four bright spots. He then took them, laid them on the ground, washing the wall, so the wall became light and was bouncing light for it. And that's what kind of the thing I started to do a few years ago, probably about 20, 2019, 2020, I started to get into the reflective light, bounce back light, and got away from a lot of the push light. Now, I do have a gig bar. That gig bar is um, used for one venue because I can't do uplighting there. But if I could do uplighting um, and I use the Astera stick lights, I like to have the indirect lighting so it's not bright and blinding people. That, to me, is the biggest thing. I, I feel I'd want people uncomfortable at an event. And, again, my goal is to put light on a dance floor versus, you know, the sound couple they have to put light onto a band because the band's a focal point. Now, my question to the two of you, or actually is more to Stacy than anything, is when you do that, when you do lighting, do you think about putting lighting onto the floor? Do you think about uh, the after effect? Do you try to do a little bit of both, do some focus point on the, the band as well as put some lighting on a dance floor and get a mood on the dance floor? Or what do you usually do for that? I would say our first, obviously, focuses on the band itself. But the other piece that we always have to think about is space. I think that often dictates how much light lights we are able to put up, especially when we start with the front lighting. Uh, so for sure, dance floor is usually a non-factor just because there's not enough lighting of our lights to go around for that. Yeah, I think the other thing, part kind of going along with that too, is that is sometimes it it hasn't doesn't happen often, but it's actually usually an additional. We it's kind of a up 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 sale, I guess, or or if if they want, um, if there's if they specifically request that, that's something we could. Assuming the space, a lot of times we're trying to, I mean, the big difference between, you know, what you guys are doing and what we're doing a lot of times is we're doing this in the same space and we're trying to fit a 10 piece band and, and space becomes such a big challenge in, in a lot of this, uh, in a lot of these situations. So, yeah, I mean, we, it, part of where the lighting and our first priority is generally to, uh, get the band, um, which is, I think just a, in general, just a very interesting perspective different perspective between like the DJ and the band um, uh, realm. But yeah, that's that's something we can do. Oddly enough, it surprises me. For all the weddings we do, we never get asked hardly to supply dance floor lighting. I, I don't know why. Or ambient lighting throughout the room. And I, I think that... Yeah, yeah. Um, and maybe that's something that, you know, that is being pushed or guided in the whole when you're when you're, you know, doing the doing the planning and all that. And it's just something that's not getting asked, you know, when we're when we're uh, planning our uh, weddings. And and to that point, we're kind of the third party. We find out about all this stuff after all everything's been set. So I don't know, maybe that's something we should offer or just plant in in the in the brains of the bands and that's that's one of the things again it's a wholly different world than what we do and it, this is why i wanted to yeah. bring out here because i also want other dgs out there to think about more ways you know don't put yourself in a box and say to this one of the things that i, I am sure i hopefully everyone else here does as a dj and giving i guys an idea i have pictures of setups with lighting Head tables with uplighting, rooms with uplighting, uh, even just doing some um, architectural lighting. And I, that term is used because you're highlighting like certain areas. You're not putting a light every two feet. You're adding color and ambiance. You're not lighting a wall up to light a wall up unless you're using it as balance to fill a dance floor. You're adding lighting to highlight things. You're adding lighting to look at things. I never look at, say, oh, well, here's 20 lights. No, it's what lights do the room need? Do they need eight lights? Does it need 12 lights? Does it need 14 lights? Does it need six lights? And sometimes <clears throat> when you do stuff like my basic package, I don't bring, you know, moving heads in stuff like that. Cause again, they're, they're, they want a more basic package. So I'm going to work smarter and, and then harder. 
and I'll put a couple lights behind me on the wall to wash the wall to hit the dance floor. And I'll put one or two lights behind the head tables. They're doing a head table, sweetheart table, and make a focal point onto where the couple is at. So there's the center where they're at. Okay, three lights across, one light right between the two of them. So your eye is focused to that focal point of the two of them. And then some lighting behind me because of the fact that I want to wash the dance floor. And there's certain things that, you know, I'll look at and do and say, okay, fine, great. Do I need lighting behind me? Do I need lighting next to me? What do I do? I want to work smart not, smarter, not harder. But the big thing with all that is who do we lose? We lost someone. Um, fire. The, yeah, we lost someone. Uh, lost fire. Um, the big fire. thing with that is uh, when we do stuff, anyone here who does stuff, is talking to people about that. And when you talk to your, again, your third party, so you have to deal with the band, do you communicate with the couple, with the people who are, are doing the event, or is it um, you just do everything through the band? We we do everything through the band. One of our biggest clients, we get a worksheet, basically, that just has the whole thing, uh, what services they need from us, and... Uh, what additional, so if there's uh, service involved, um, the, that type of thing. So um, what type of DJing, uh, so they'll like have playlists, they'll provide all that stuff to us. So we we just have to go off what, what's on the sheet, which is, it, it, it usually works. Uh, uh, they got it down really well, uh, but, you know, it does make you, have it, it takes a while to get that trust and faith that things are going to go the way you expect them to and they and they do generally so we don't we never have anybody show up and say well how come you're not lighting up the room or how come you're not you know we need lights on the dance floor that that never happens so that's i i think you know it i don't know if it's just people think of a of bands and djs just differently uh, you know whether they well, realize it or I, not I, or I, even I, understand it but, I think that a lot of bands, and again, you work with bands more than I do, but I always mm -hmm. have this feeling with bands that they want to be the center of attention and versus most DJs don't look at ourselves as center of attention. We're there to provide music, sound, you know, and talk to people and give them instructions. But the center of attention usually is the couple. That's yeah. their special day. The center of attention is the, if you're doing a corporate event, is the people speaking is the corporate event the center of attention is you know the high school prom or something like that is the kids us as djs we're there to provide sound there to provide music but we're not supposed to be front and center even though a lot of times we kind of are but the thing is that our focal point is to be a little more background than bands being like hey in your face and hey I want light on me. I I definitely would say that's a big difference. And one of the things we do to kind of support that for sure is during first dances, mm -hmm. we keep the stage dark, dark. We don't put on our lights unless I guess if the photographers right. ask uh, or somebody asks for it, but that is a moment where we're for sure not wanting to make the band, you know, that focal point. And we try to do it all night long, <laughs> but it, it's, it's, it's one of the things that, again, it's a whole different world and it's a different thought and mindset, like not talking. Well, to that started customer. with, yeah, I was just going to say that started with, with, uh, the flicker, the lot, we had a lot of photographers yeah. yeah, saying, please don't, please turn them off or please don't, you know, they'll come up to us and say, you're not going to have the lights on. Right. You know, it's like, no, we don't, we don't need them on. So we just. Over the years, have we just learned to just, you know what, we're going to default have them off. And, and that, I think it supports, yeah, that's one that of the things supports that we, both. That's one of the that, things like we do with, with, we do up lighting and up lights stay on. Now I always tell the photographer, like the, the dance lights, even though I have the Asteras, they may be on, but I will turn them. They have an option because Astera does stuff for TV and music. I mean, TV and video and um, movies, uh, they have, you know, a different uh, temperature of light. So I can pick it, you know, 4,500 or 4,000 K lighting, turn these sticks into some additional lighting for the dance floor. And I talked to the photographer, done that plenty of times, and the uplights are stagnant. And because they're indirect lighting, they don't do anything to 
the pitchers. Okay. And I don't do, again, I spin the puke lights I've got rid of, so there's no lights. But even before then, I don't do dance lights, you know, dance lights like doing heads on earth or that until the dance floor opens. Special dances, introductions, anything like that, it's regular room lighting. And I know some guys, you know, turn sparklers on, they put all the room lights on. <laughs> and I just, again, I just feel that it takes away from the elegance of what's happening. Again, that's my opinion. I'm, you know, some people may say, no, I do this. You do what you want to do, but that's what I do. Um, I got, I got to go to Matt because Matt has a lot of lighting and a lot of DMX. Um, when you do lighting and stuff like that, what is your uh, focal points? Um, I, I like to bring enough lighting to make it effective to, uh, properly achieve the, I mean, to me, you could be a sh crappy DJ and, uh, I got, I got to warn you, you now. <laughs> you could be, <laughs> you yeah, could be a crappy a DJ. Horn. <laughs> you could be a crappy DJ, uh, but if you have good lighting, um, you could make the dance floor look way better more popping than it is. Um, and then also like I've seen colleagues that just have up lights on a static color. Uh, and then like, that's all their lighting or, you know, their lights are doing the same slow fade the whole night or if even that, and it's like, you don't get that energy that you do with lighting. So I think lighting should obviously enhance things. Uh, I try not to blind people, but I always do because I think lights look best when pointed directly at the crowd. Um, so that's just my, that's my take on it. Um, People should well, be you also, have, you also have blinders too to blind people. So I have, I have everything they could blind you with. Um, but uh, you make them blind and deaf, they can't I, hear, I, like can't see. I, <laughs> I just think the lighting should help enhance the the soundtrack. Uh, so it should add to it. It shouldn't be distracting. So I mean, if you're not DMXing your lights, it it it's better to not have lights than to have lights and not know how to DMX them uh, and just have them going crazy the whole night. I think it looks terrible like that. So, um, you know, I have a guy that I know that bills himself as a luxury DJ. And once dancing starts, he just turns all his up lights on in auto mode. And it looks like a, it looks like a DJ fire show. He's not here. So it's. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> he, he's he's going to be back in a little bit. His phone had a reset had an update. So he, he can, he can yell you just, when he gets back here. <laughs> two, three, it's. <laughs> Uh oh, his wife must be uh, talking to him. Yeah, she's loud sometimes. Um, no, so it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you just you don't want it to look seizure inducing and and just too many different. And my thing is, uh, I don't buy lights unless I know how I'm going to utilize them. And so I don't just pick up lights just to say, oh, this is cool. I could I could, you know, use this this one time. I like to kind of build my shows, get the fixtures, and then program it ahead of time and not there so that way like i kind of have all my overrides set and then adjust after you know i had got the new eliminator mega washes used them for an event loved them but there was a couple things i wanted to tweak so came home that night tweaked a few settings that way like when we go and do it again it'll be just how i like it so and, and I'm you not do that, a, I'm you not do that in freestyler right you do that in freestyler yeah it all in freestyle. i'm gonna switch at some point because I, I would like I, I just like that it's PC based that I can just, um, you know, tap keys and trigger stuff that way. Cause I, I'm DJing at the same time. So I, I can't really look and find a button or find a touch screen or anything like that. I have to, like, I know how to type with one hand, left and right. So, like, my computer's on the left. I can find a song, load it with one whole hand, run the lighting on the right, uh, pick up the mic when I need to. So that's that's how I look into it. But that and that's a that's a cool cool thing, you know. Uh Martin Stacy, question for you guys. What what software do you guys use for DMXing? We use Luminaire. Okay. And how do you how do you like that software? Would you do you have you looked at other software or is that one you just fell in love with or it seemed to be like the the easiest at the time? And we have I've had I've gotten to use my DMX Go at one particular bar, so I've had some experience with other with DMX AGJs. versions. But yeah, and I don't know. Once you can figure out how to program yeah. them, it it goes pretty slick. You got to remember the other thing we were looking for is 
the Luminaire will run on an iPad and having that wireless freedom and running off an iPad is huge. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have all the scenes programmed and with pictures and for, you know, for her and for, and if I'm doing it, it's just, we're, we, it's this minimal amount of work just to get the results that, that we're looking for. It's, you're just pressing, pressing the scene buttons and it's, and it's so slick off an iPad and then it'll run, it'll run on a Mac too. So depending on our situation, you know, we could, we got options to running it on different platforms, save the files, our projects in, uh, on iCloud and, we are set to go anywhere we go, um, ready to rock. So uh, I, I I did a video on, on our channel of kind of a luminaire overview. Um, the other thing, you know, and, and it's gotten, it, I don't know if anybody's heard of it or familiar. There's a lot of choices out there. There are people that it seems, it seems like the controllers are, people either love them or they hate them. So I've, seen good and bad about what we use but um i don't know i we haven't really seen the need to change uh there's we've you know people have suggested other things and and um i don't know i just haven't well no if you're, if you're happy with it it's working it's working point. for the two of you yeah, yeah. If it's working for the two of you you know unless there's something radically thing comes out that's like oh my god it's the best thing ever you know, again, everyone has their, their certain software, you know. Uh, Show yep. Express is one of the ones I'm very familiar with. I have it on two computers, but I have a Astera. They have their own world, their own universe. Uh, I have uh, – Rockville doesn't have – they. I, I've used Rockville with uh, Chauvet, uh, Show Express, and have, like, one connected onto it, uh, as well as my moving heads, Chauvet, Show Express. So, you know, one of the things I, I was taught actually by uh, – John Colley, who was on the show a little while ago, he walked me through a lot of things on Show Express, was to make potatoes for the moving heads. You look on there, you draw, basically it looks like a potato in there. So it goes and it does a, whatever it does on the ceiling of figure eight, or it circles around, or it sweeps above a head. So you basically draw a potato in the software because it gives you an idea what it looks like. And that's, that's kind of what it is. You draw your potato, and you figure out the size, you make where things go. And it, it, it's 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 one of the things that once you get to know the software and you kind of go through it, it's it's the important thing with DMX. Um, and I know Brentley, Brentley, he uses uh, DMX, wireless DMX, and he uses um, through uh, Pioneer's own software for DJing, but also uses the uh, DMX uh, output on that. Yeah, I do. I'm using record box sliding mode. But it doesn't have the profiles for my Portmans. So I went back to a Chauvet, o for, Obey, a Chauvet Obey 40 to control the Portmans and the, two, the Portman Towers and my uplights. So it's now really made a distinction in my packages. If you're ordering my premium packages, you're getting my premium light shows with the controller and all of that. If you're ordering one of my basic packages, you know, my bronze or even now my silver at times, you're getting what, you know, which is a pretty solid light show. It's all in my deck on any one of the decks I use. So I can literally just click what I have now, which is supposed to be beat rolls or whatever it is. And I converted that to my lighting pads. So for half of it, it is for that part of it. It's super simple. I literally just plug a downer into the output downers into my lights and similarly to like Show Express or Wolf Mix, you just put the fixture in the DMX order you want it or number you want it and basically set up what you want that fixture to be doing. So you can have it act as a straight par can or as they call a bar light, which is meant for being on a T-bar of some kind. And then they have, you know, dip, like moving head fit settings, settings for stuff like the wash effects hex or whatever that is i don't have one but i know which you've got it behind you in your picture there uh oh thing. yeah uh, oh yeah these these are the regular wash effects twos yeah but good. they have different record box lighting has settings for each kind of fixture you're going to use wow. so you can get the best usage out of it now is it the are the scenes the best absolutely not 
Is it a plug plug and plug and go and play kind of setup? Yes, and it makes everything a million times easier. So when I really dove into record box lighting and found out its capabilities, it also showed me its limitations. And it does have a lot. Your up lighting, you can't program to a static color anymore. In record box four and five, you could program it so you could just leave your up lights on, have them on one static color. And then when you're ready to start your show, click over to the show setting and you're good to go. In record box six and seven, that's no longer a feature you can use. So it's definitely set up for a dance club or a dance DJ's kind of thing. Just like their decks are definitely laid out for like an EDM DJ, whereas the Serato Pion- uh, the Serato Rev decks are laid out for a hip hop battle style DJ. This deck is definitely made for a like record box is definitely set for the club DJ standard. And that's the thing is, you know, different softwares do different things. I'm going to go over to Australia and uh, Paul over there. Uh, I don't know. Do you do any DMX or anything like that? Or? Uh, I do use uh, just a normal DMX controller. Um, even though I've got a Denon Prime 4 Plus, which has got onboard uh, sound switch, um, I have no idea how to use it. So, so I quite just stick to the regular DMX uh, controller. Okay. I know I know uh I know cool thing has sound yeah, switch. Yeah. Yeah, I do. And I actually have a video, so after the show, just go to my YouTube channel, just look up sound switch and I made a tutorial. And I know I know the guys who use sound switch, um, the DJs that do, they do like it because you're kind of you have scenes program in there and you hit one button and it does that scene. Kind of like how I do or or uh Bart and Stacey don't do on the, their tablets on picking a scene for lighting. It's pre-programmed. You know what it's going to do. It's going to do this, this, this. And you can build that scene in Sound Switch. It walks you through it. There's tons of tutorials on YouTube. And that you basically, you're basically you just basically tapping buttons. And I, I know that um, the icon, when you see a certain icon, and you pick that icon, you can look real quickly and hit it. Um, kind of like, I know Matt hits keys. He's used to a keyboard. So you hit, you know, A and get this kind of program or F and get that program. Kind of the same thing. Once you're in a certain screen, you know where the screens are at. Um, and you can set up your screens. So that way you have your, like your four or five most popular lighting effects. You can have, you know, that in one area. And if you got to go into like change colors, uh, you go into another screen and you change that. Yeah. I've seen a device called uh, Maestro, uh, uh, AI DMX and um, I kind of like the idea but there's no actual control over it yes it does all your lights and, and does all a little bit of a light show but you don't actually have any light switch there's no button to you know if you want to do a blackout or whatever um, it pretty much you know you switch it on and it does its own thing sort of thing but uh, I like the idea but I guess you know using it is you know kind of you know a hit and miss kind of thing because you don't have any actual buttons that you can press to you know okay the song's finished or you want to do a you know a, a drop and where everything all the lights go out and then bang the lights come back on you know because you want to do it uh, rather than letting the 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 I guess this uh, device you know do the the whole controlling of it but I don't know uh, but that's one of the the products that are out and about they're about a thousand dollars US. Uh, um for one of these devices so and unfortunately you can't tell it at least not yet tell it what you want to do like is it like you go to uh your uh, iphone or go to your android phone and say hey google do this or well, my phone saying hey what are you talking about uh <laughs> you know you you say those kind of phrases and you can't tell it uh what to do uh yeah, there's there's, well, that's, there's that's, Google trying to tell me stuff. <laughs> well, that's that's what I kind of like about Solstice. Uh, you know, Matt's uh, set up. Uh, you know, he has a computer where he can he has a hundred percent control over his lighting show. So I, I kind of like that idea, and uh, but I kind of like the idea of of sound switch as well. But uh, I guess you know I'll, I'll get there in the end. And 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 uh, but I yeah, you know, like I said, I, at the moment I just use a normal DMX controller. You know, so it works. It, it does. It works. Does hey, what it I works. It to works. Do. There's there's nothing wrong with that. Um, Jeff, what about you? What do you what do you do? Do you do uh, DMX? Or you do wireless DMX? Or you just do basics? 
Yeah, no, I've got uh, uh, wireless DMX. I've got the uh, Airstream DMX bridge. Um, it runs off an iPad. Um, this is actually the iPad here. Let me pull it up. Um, so I have created custom buttons for all my scenes. Um, and it's telling me it's not connected. Yeah, so we know that. But, you know, top left is blackout. So that's, you know, really quick. And, uh, you know, the first thing I go to, sound active. I've got SA. They're all abbreviated, which is uh, helpful. Uh, SL is slow. Um, strobe, white, all. Uh, movers auto. Uh, movers auto to the sound. Um, movers star circle. So little abbreviations that tell me, you know, what either, you know, the, um, uh, you know, PARs are doing or the moving heads, that type of thing. So, and this is one page, you can put up to 30 pages on that. The, the bad thing is you have to program all that and you have to be pretty good at DMX programming and figure it out and know all your, all your fixtures and what they're capable of. Um, and the other downside is, Inevitably, uh, just about every event that I do, um, you know, it's up to me to push these buttons, you know. Uh, so I'll leave it in auto uh, quite a bit. When I go to a slow song, I will put it in slow. Uh, in inevitably, I will forget to put it in slow, you know. And uh, so I'm um, I'm transitioning to a slow song, and uh, and I look out at the crowd and. And the lights are going crazy, <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> or vice versa. You know, I come off a slow song and uh, and you know pump it back up again and get some you know 120, 128 BPM, and I look up and oh, it's still just the the slow blue. You know, that's my slow. Is everything is blue and the movers are just going you know crossing very slowly with you know blue just doing like this. So um, that, that so that's the down downside of it. You know, it's uh, you've got to. You've got to remember to push the buttons. So, and that's one thing that SoundSwitch does for you. Um, but I do like the option of hitting that blackout or the strobe when I want to do it, because occasionally there's a there's a drop that sometimes SoundSwitch will not recognize, and you know it, you just want to hit it. Sometimes you just want to build a build some momentum in a song, and um, you know, and do it with lighting. So, yeah, I use Airstream DMX Bridge. And that's the thing is that it's um, it's interesting how everyone does everything. And uh, uh, Martin Stacey, on you, you, how many pages do you have on your tablet as far as uh, scenes? You have like one or two, or it's this is uh, for our standard light show. This is for our main stage lighting. This is everything right here. That's all. So I, I don't remember. It's like, or actually, there's more. There's it scrolls down this depends on the size of the of the tablet but and you can shrink these you can uh make these a little bit smaller but we don't you don't want too small i i, I, I know right i i know that you're running usually running your board on a tablet so you run two tablets then or do you you bart have your sound tablet and stacy has the light tablet yes i have two separate lighting tablets actually yeah, it's, yeah, we this this scene right here, or I'm sorry, this project right here is our kind of our main lighting uh, that we use for every gig. And then if we're using uh, some optional lights, we got that on a different project, and it's easier just to run that off another device. Now the question so is, the do you also have it on a phone? Yes, you can technically do it. Yeah, phone. Luminaire, we could. You can actually run it off your watch if if you if you want to. So it's yeah, it's pretty pretty. If you got if you're into the Apple ecosystem, it's it's real flexible in that in that regard. Well, M Matt's in that world. Matt loves uh, Apple, and so does Cool Thing, Hunter. They're both Al big Apple fans. Uh, I think Jeff Jeff and you, you got like right? subscriptions too. <laughs> Jeff, you got Apple, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm Apple, and the uh, the iPads are Mac. So yeah. yeah, I have one iPad for lighting, and the other iPad is uh, all my backup music that is uh, plugged into the controller, just ready. And luckily, knock on wood, it's never happened, but it's there and ready when the computer dies. So it'll happen one day. So and when it does, I'll be ready. I don't. I hope you guys. Um, I, before I go into a couple more people. Um, cause I still gotta get to Chris and, uh, Mr. Dixon. Um, now I know I use, I, I use the bad thing, Corin and Matt. I use Android. 
uh, <laughs> on my tablet because I have Samsung tablets. Uh, I have a Samsung uh, uh, S S five is my older one, and then I have an S nine is the one I use for lighting. Um, and the S five uh, I use for for ceremonies for for sound. The S the S nine when I'm in the uh, the light mode for it, because that's what I use the lighting with for that tablet, I notice that the battery drains fairly quickly. Now, I don't know, I, don't, I can't remember the size of the battery. I know it's pretty substantially sized battery. Do you see that with your tablets? Um, I'm going to go with Bart and Stacey first because, you know, they're the ones that have brought their tablet out. Do you, you run the tablet all through? Do you run the battery fairly quickly? Yeah, it the battery stays pretty good for the for the duration. Yeah, they they, they last the whole night, yeah. but that is a that is a whole thing in itself uh between charging our Donner DMXs and charging tablets. Uh that is we have a dedicated spot that we make sure everything is charged up and ready to go before before we before we leave for the gig. So um it's uh Luminaire doesn't doesn't drain the batteries too bad on the iPad. We can do a whole night without a problem. I, I think one of the problems I have with it is that I usually leave it. I have the timeout on the screen for fifteen minutes, so when I get into it. It's on for fifteen minutes, and it, it drains fairly quickly. I never ran into. I'm like, I need to plug in, but usually I'm down to like around yeah. thirty percent at the end of the night versus a hundred percent where I first start tonight. Generally, yeah, we like to sleeping. I try to disable all that stuff on our devices because when devices go to sleep, in fact, we've had that happen with with our lighting, where oh. <laughs> it doesn't, yeah, it, yeah it, it'll not connect, and you'll be pushing stuff, and it's not hap. You know, it's, we got to swipe up and close the app out. So typically, we we try to once we our devices are on, we don't we don't shut them down. If we if like on break or something, we will plug them in just to make sure they they stay, you know, okay. But um, yeah, I, I turn all that stuff off personally. I just don't like like devices going to sleep. Yeah, it, it's it's one of the things I like to have it uh, open as much as possible to do things. And um, it looks like we got. Looks like we got a little broadcast problem, but um, we'll continue on here because we're recording. Uh, but the thing is that, you know, it's just one of the things that uh, I, I do get down to like 30% with battery at the end of the night. Of course, I have the tablet on kind of like you guys, you know, you're probably have it on pretty early in the day and you're going through everything, especially the sound checks and stuff. And uh, you're, you know, doing the lighting throughout the whole entire night. Uh, I'm going to go over to Chris. Uh, Chris. Uh, do you do DMX or do you do uh, what do you do for lighting? Computerized DMX, wireless with the Donners, and I also use a hardware controller that's uh, MIDI based uh, to the Chauve Show Express. I use the uh, Akai APC Mini. And what software do you use for Show. your DMX? Show Express. Okay. And that's the important thing is that um, when you're doing whatever software you're doing, um, do you ever run into when you're doing Show Express and you're running into um, new lights, sometimes uh, it's hard to program them? Yeah, you have to create your own profiles, fixtures for for some of those new ones. You know, you got to get to the manufacturer's site of your, of your fixture and get those... Uh, traits for the dmx for each channel they they have so uh sometimes it's hard to find them i mean even with uh some of the older venues they may not have the uh the fixtures now you gotta manually find where these are and i guess the oldest ones uh, people are now using these uh these chinese lights that uh have no really name name recognition or brand and the traits are just so strangely put together where some of the known manufacturers keep them consistent throughout their series of, of lighting. And unfortunately in the past um, few years, it seems like, um, and again, I'm not the only one that has said this, is that uh, Chave, uh, American DJ, 
they've kind of gotten away from the mobile DJ and done more of the house of worship and uh, school function setups. And <clears throat> if you're looking for moving heads, you're looking for a certain lighting, um, you're having companies like B Topper and companies like, uh, oh, what's the other one? Um, what's the other one that uh, that Fire uses all the time? Uh, uh, I can't remember. Uh, you Kids, another one. PHDS. Yeah, there's there's a few. Sheds. Sheds. Sheds, U King. Yeah. Um the, the the companies you can kind of get off of Amazon because <clears throat> they're they're Chinese manufacturers. They're the original manufacturers that you know like uh show uh, that uh, Chauve goes to or um uh, ADJ goes to or someone goes to whoever it is says, Hey, make me this and they build it for them. Well, they kind of I can't say copy it, but they're like we we know how to make this. We can make our own and slap our name on it. It's not the same as, you know, again, uh, Chauvet, and something happens, they have very good service. Uh, American DJ, they have very good service. Something happens to a U-King, it's, you know, an $80 light, $90 light, and it's like, okay, just go buy another one. Um, it, it's not the same as paying, you know, $500 for a light. Uh, quality, for most of the part, I, I, I it probably you know equal to uh, some of the uh, Chauvet and ADJ in some areas. In other areas, they're not the same, you know. So it's kind of one of the oh, things yeah. you kind of sure, get what you pay for. Is, it's very up there. It's just the programming that's in the like that circuit board. You know how sophisticated is it? Oh, I, I I know the U Kings. I have a set. Didn't pay a lot for them. They actually went down in price. I paid uh, one ninety four. I think for two of them. They're too little. Uh, lights are equal to the uh, like ADJ pocket uh, moving heads. So they're small little moving heads. Are I want to say a twenty watt LED. And they're yeah. not very super bright. They're small. They're tiny, um, but they're identical for programming to ADJ's little pocket pros. So yeah. I don't know if they, they 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 built it for them, and they said, okay, hey, you know what? Since we built so many for them, we can make our own and kind of use kind of the same ideas and that's why it's similar or or what but it's it's one of the things that i always look at you know the begin the name brand stuff chauvet american dj uh you know color key those companies right there are the you know ones that i something happens i have re, i have like a not only a good resource but also i have uh, a way of getting stuff uh, serviced Versus the ones from B Top or stuff like that, they're cheap. So if something goes wrong with them, you're tossing them out, and then you can buy another one. Um, Dwayne, what about you? What do you do for lighting? I use sound switch, and then I use the um, controller. So therefore, I can uh, if I wanted to manually like do a specific kind of scene, I can just hit a button and do it. Other than that, I leave it on. Um, I take my tracks and make sure I run it through sound switch so they automatically do the lights for me. Other than that, I just use that. And then there's a couple other little features within sound switch I can hit if I want to change the mood. So it doesn't blink so much. It'd be more of a fade and an ambiance kind of thing. Hey, Dwayne, it's, it's Paul from Melbourne. Uh, just a mm -hmm. real quick question. If, if uh, I'm just curious, with sound switch, if you want to do, a, you know, like track somebody that's, you know, like with the, you've got two, you know, moving heads, you know, uh, large mm -hmm. moving heads, whether they're spot or washers, and you want to follow them on the dance floor, how do you do that with sound switch? Is it, does it have a, does the actual physical sound switch box have a joystick or, or what's the process it, in regards to tracking somebody on a floor? I'm not sure how to do it on this unit, but you can kind of like, Move the knobs, and it and your moving heads will move. But then also you um you are you gotta have sound switch open anywhere on your computer. The other easiest way is, is to go into the sound switch software, and there's a MIDI side to it. You just hit it's a button. I'm not sure which button it is, but you can actually draw the path that you want your moving heads to go. And that, that's that's one of the that. things like I do for uh, on Chevy Sound Express. I, I I don't know if uh, Chris does that, but that potato I said I do. That's what I do when I get into the room, is draw my potato so I know where the light's going, so I can see in the room because it's hard to do it. Let, let's say in my office here, I put two uh, moving heads in here, 
great. It looks great in the ceiling. It looks great across here. I go into a big room. It looks like it's going straight up because I don't have the, the depth and distance. Whoa. Scale is different. Oh, yeah. Um, really quickly, Burton oh, Stacy. You've got me. I'll, I'll get you. Don't me. worry. We'll see. You can, I don't you need you. Worry. It's fine. <laughs> really quickly. Um, he uses sound switch. I know he uses sound, he uses sound switch, but he also uses sound active too. Um, and he does DMX because I he has a set up in his uh, garage. I, I saw mm -hmm. everything set up in his garage for his garage DJ setup. I said the best for last. Hold on. <laughs> uh, really quickly. Um, what brand of lights do you guys use for your par bars? We use the Chave four bars. That is the core of our system. And the that I would really have a hard time not using those. I mean, they're just the the they come in the suitcase if you're familiar with them. They're they they come all you know attached to the bar, really quick and easy to set up, and just effective for 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 what for what we use them for. So I'm gonna go over to a cool thing now because he wanted to say what he does and what what he has set up. Uh, and I know he has a few different lights. So go ahead, uh, Hunter. Well, um, well, what I use is sound switch because I have it built into the Mixstream Pro. And what I like about the Mixstream Pro is that it's got it's built it's built in lighting controller. So it's kind of like a two in one where I get music and of course the lighting in one big unit. And uh, DJ Mikey Mike gave me a new sound switch dongle that I'm able to plug into the back of the controller. And I use DMX to go from one to the other. As you can see from here, I go from this one to that one using a 20, 25 foot DMX cable. And for the garage setup, I actually use DMX. I use five foot DMX and I put them all on an automatic mode, like one lighting tree for an automatic mode. So I let him go crazy all night and while I'm practicing and really set the vibe and all that stuff. And you have also, and I have uh, the rock. Part, yeah, I, yeah. I have the rock part fifties for the garage setup. And you also have the, uh, wash, uh, lights too, right? Mm. Like in your picture. Well, that's what these you? are. The show. Yeah. Yeah. That's what these are. The, Twos. And you DMX them too, and right? these things like, yeah, I, I DMX them to the Mixstring Pro using the sound switch. It's built right in. Yeah, those those will. And provide... what I do is I press that. Oh yeah, they'll provide definitely. a lot of light. Yeah, definitely an entire dance floor. So, got some things here. I know Mike's been saying stuff, blown up, and I appreciate. it. Uh, Mike, one of the things he called out, Mike is another DJ. He is in uh, Pennsylvania. Um, bands, uh, they have a bad habit putting wires all over the place versus us DJs are always trying to hide cables and wires. Um, do you guys ever talk to uh, bands or anything like that about how to hide some cables? Or you guys usually do a pretty good job about hiding things, but it seems like bands just don't, they, they don't care. They just throw, they just throw cables anywhere. My my viewpoint is we take care of our stuff. We do the best job we do with ours. And then whatever the band does, if they trip over their own cables, that's their fault. Their insurance, not yeah, yours. But that's, that's I, completely, thing. I completely <laughs> agree. <laughs> trouble. We laugh at some we don't we laugh at how some cables get wrapped and it's it's uh it's yeah, that's definitely we're we're right right on board with that. Uh, yeah, to Stacy's point, we try to take care of what we can, but even at a recent gig, you know, they created a tripping hazard. Yeah. And, you know, we're we're like the parents stepping in sometimes. That's what it feels like. Um, and making sure that we're taking care of things that that uh, you know could be certainly dangerous to other people. So yeah, I don't know. We we try to do a good job. I will say this. Um I believe that. Some of these messes, they look worse on camera than they do when you're there. Um, I, I'm not trying to make excuses, but I, 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 I've I, looked and it's like sometimes I'll be watching 
some videos or, you know, thinking about a gig we did. And I'm like, there's no way it looked that bad, but you know, maybe, maybe that's just, you know, me trying to have a blind eye, but. I think also a lot of us DJs, we are hypercritical on cables scene. Yeah. And that's one of the things that, you know, again, I see stuff and, and again, I know I understand the band world's totally different than the DJ world. Like you'll never see us. You'll never see us wrapping our our cables up the speaker pole. I mean, I, you know, and I know that, you know, I appreciate some of the, you know, that detail, uh, but I, we just, yeah, just can't go there. And, you know, yeah, and, and, and probably in some ways we have, we have more cables, you know, especially when you start running all the instruments and everything, it, 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 it becomes a thing. Yeah, you, even you with have... uh, with running bands, you'd you'd have that. There's a certain amount of aesthetic that you want. You want it. You, you don't want it to look like a you know, a, a, you know, a rubbishy sort of you know, yeah. you know, ragtag show sort of thing. And one of the things I think that helps us uh, that I've seen other people do that kind of drives me crazy is using the right length cable for what you need. You know, don't use that 50 foot to go 10 feet. That's, that's what starts a lot of it, you know? And, and so we have, we have a lot of different choices and lengths of cables that we carry with us. And that's but one dude, of the things dude, that I got um, a deal on that 50 foot cable. It was like $12, <laughs> man. <yeah. laughs> that's, that's, that's the thing. I think a lot of bands, depending on how popular a band is, a lot of these guys who are playing, you know, or guitar or bass or drum, they look at, I'm going to buy one cable and that's all I need, but I need, I want to make sure the cable's long enough in case I need it. But if it's extra, I'll just coil it next to me. And that coil becomes a pile. And yeah. versus, I have a whole entire, um, I have a whole entire uh, tote of different length XLR cables because I want the cable to go come right down the back of the of a speaker pole and into something or if it's a, whatever it is i want cables hidden i tape things down i don't want things tripping heads because i trip a lot i'm a cl i'm kind of clumsy i have big feet I, I wear size 15 shoes so i don't have small feet and i trip over a cable very quickly so tracy's always making sure she's taping it down for me thank god for her um but also less likely there's something happening, but I try to hide cables and hide things as much as I possibly can. Um, it's, it's, it's one of the things that I think that a lot of TJs do because they want, you know, the mystery of what's happening. Kind of like the wizard of Oz. Don't, don't pay attention to the, to the man behind the curtain. Sure. Kind of like, don't pay attention to those cables behind the, the, the booth, you know, just pay attention to the cool stuff. And it, it's, it's one of the things I know and, bands and then... are totally different. Yeah, and it helps that if you use all black cables too. I mean, I made the transition to all black cables about fifteen so years ago. Um, you know, I used to have orange ones, orange extension cords, orange, uh, you know, white power boards. Uh, and I made the transition. Someone suggested, uh, um, "Hey, make the transition to you know black. It, it looks a lot more sleek." You know, so it's easier to Agreed. hide. We we are, we are guilty of there the is order. a point you do need color a certain color cables if you're outdoors you need to make sure no one's going to trip on that if you got that yeah. board running a certain direction sometimes you, you have, have yeah some, i think i have so one orange indoor, 50 if you're foot indoor extension. if all your gigs are indoor you definitely need the black cables to make them less visible and i will tell you i have multiple colors of gaffer tape i have like three different browns i have white i have black i have gray because the fact that I try to blend into the carpet and make those cables, make that tape disappear. That's how elaborate we go, you know. Uh, what else? Did, uh, <laughs> I know uh, Mike loves his Apple products, too, because he was saying that iPads always hold a good charge. Uh, DJ Cool Thing, do it up. Um, never wrap your, coal, your cables around the poles by gator clips. Yep, no, use Velcro uh, cable ties. Um Buy your own cables and ends and make your own. Zip ties. Oh, no, Dude, don't make your own cables. It's stupid. <laughs> I, 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 I would rather... I can buy I them have, pretty... I have power cables from a guy, and I hate them. Because they don't... You can't make... If people make cables, they can't make them with that molded end that a regular extension cord comes with. So you get this big, clunky, round thing that takes up two spots on a power strip. And it's just not... It's not convenient. Uh, that's why I, 
I, I, they do make the smaller ones there, Solstice. Well, I need to tell my guy that because he got these fat white cords for my white speakers, and the thing oh. is like two, three inch in diameter. It's sorry, nice. cables in uh, they're out. I want to say in LA, I bought cables from them in white, uh, speak on cables and uh, XLR mm -hmm. cables. They custom make cables, mm -hmm. they're in LA area. I definitely recommend not cheap, but they're really good. Sorry, cables. Um, but yeah, uh, Mike says build your own, make your own cables. Yeah, it, it, you can your extension cords and stuff like that. You can make your own, but I much rather buy like kind of like Matt said. I don't want a big head. Um, and the I, other part I'll is hey, I always try either. to go to the the, the lowest number because that's the thickest cable. So I try to get down to the fourteen or twelve because I want the biggest thickest cable possible. So at less likelihood of it overheating, and that way you can you can hold the full double digits. Shame on you, buddy. Come on, you're supposed to use single digit wire. If I can get, if I trust me, if I can get, if I can get 10 gauge or 8 gauge, I would. Uh, but I've yet to find them in black. Usually, they're the industrial ones, they're multicolored because they're, they're supposed to be safety yeah. around industrial equipment. So, and I'm not running you know 30 amp cords, you know, you're running you know 15 amps <laughs> I'm not at either. most. Well, if you want to run a 30 amp cord, hey, God bless you, you know, <laughs> that's pretty heavy to move around, but yeah. I always try to go to the lowest possible. Well, 12 is what I try to go for. Uh, mostly you find 14, but I would never go higher than that. I see guys with the thin little white uh, extension cords like you'd use for Christmas lights plugged into for an amp on a guitar. Yeah. There's actually a video on YouTube of one of those catching on fire behind a band. Uh, they had a white extension cord, and they plugged into a uh, white small little uh, power strip and have all this band gear plugged into it and it's on fire behind uh, i think it's next to a drummer so yeah it, it's uh it, it's one of the crazy things and mike says xlr cables make your own xlr cables so that's what he's saying uh dj fire really quickly on you because i haven't gotten to you you're out you're in you're out you're in your phone decided to uh do an update um unmute yourself and um Let's see here. You gotta mute yourself, and then on lighting on yep. DMX. What what software you use for DMX, and um, what do you uh, what do you love doing with it? Well, I just uh, actually in the closet. I haven't even taken it out of the box yet. I got sound switch. Um, I got a guy uh, that's gonna help me try to get it set up. Eventually, I want to get into something more or less like Matt uses. But I think I'm going to start off with sound switch. Just kind of get to learn the ins and outs of that. I used to just do a lot of uh, sound active auto programming stuff. But I also have a Rockville WR4, I think is what it's called. It's a wireless analog controller. So I'll be able to set scenes. And actually, I did use that at my uh, Sullivan um, homecoming dance. I was able to set those up for different scenes to have the lights do different things. Um, I actually had the moving heads programmed in there too, and I had some different strobe scenes and uh, crowd blinders programmed in there as well. So um, I'm kind of trying to get away from the analog controller stuff. I mean, it has wireless DMX in it, so that's kind of why I got it. But um, just trying to move up to uh, sound switch, and then from there move on to something like Matt uses or. Maybe uh, Chavez Show Express or something of that nature. Just haven't decided yet, but time will tell. That's the important Good. thing. And uh, really quickly, I want to, again, thank the sound couple for coming back on again. We got to have them back on here because it's always great listening to how the other worlds of sound and music do things and how important it is and how they look at things differently than we do as DJs. And it's always fun, and especially... If you're going to, as a DJ, work with a sound professional, let's say you're going to DJ band you, and you deal with someone like the sound couple, talk to them, reach out to them, and you know, not only get to know them, but also ask them how can you support them, help them out. Because the more communication you have with them, the life is easier for them, the happier they are, the happier you are, because you know what you're going into, not going to blind, going day off, go, oh, hey, by the way, I'm the DJ. And you have no idea what's going on. That's not fun. And I'm sure they'll be the first. And you know what the yet. coolest thing is, or, or or something that's really we're we're both our objectives are identical. So it's I think you know it it just uh, 
I think there's a lot to be, we've watched other uh, DJs, you know, other channels and learned, have learned a lot. And I think musicians, bands could learn a lot from, from your community. And that's why we just enjoy being a part of this. So thank you. Well, you, you guys are part of the community. You got, you can, you're a little bit different than us, but you're, we're all starting to part <laughs> of the same thing. We're there to take care of customers and we're there to provide music, Absolutely. light and sound. And again, how you guys do lighting, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring on here. Plus also I want your lovely wife to, you know, I know she's the lighting guru over by you. So I wanted to make sure that she, you know, she got a chance to talk a little bit more. Uh, but the thing is that I, I appreciate both of you guys being on the show. Uh, just don't, don't run off uh, again. Don't run you guys run off yet. And again, if you guys are out there, uh, I, I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Um, and thank you all for being on here. I know we had a couple glitches with, uh, with, uh, Twitch tonight. I don't know why, but I appreciate you, uh, run through that. If you're watching on YouTube, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe and follow. I didn't say it in the beginning because I talked about, uh, our dear friend who unfortunately passed. But uh, I want to thank you all. I want to thank all the DJs here tonight, especially, uh, again, uh, the sound couple. They're just uh, awesome. I love watching their gig logs because I learn a lot from them. And I thank you all for being here. Uh, guys, uh, let's see. Who's going to take it away tonight? Uh, you know what? I'm going to let Hunter take it away tonight because he was last. I said I'd say best for last. So, again, Hunter, take us away tonight. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of the DJ Roundtable. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe on the channel. And we'll see you guys next week. Peace out. Good night, everyone. Peace out.